Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about uh, this book I've been reading and I think this is a book I highly recommend for anyone who is uh, starting the uh, career journey, getting into a career, um, already in a career, or maybe even someone who's 10-20 years down the line and has worked somewhere for uh, many years already. Uh, so I think it applies for anyone at high school and above and even if you're not really worried about your career and you have a plan it has a lot of things in it that um, I think are very useful uh, just to assess if this is what you really want to do and if this is the most beneficial thing for you now I've mentioned this a few times uh, the whole the rabbit hole for this whole uh, thing about careers and uh, the current economy and the, the current options in this time and age for uh, obtaining a job it goes much deeper than you think and I've explored this uh, this whole uh, concept very in depth I've read books on it articles watched a lot of video speeches from numerous sources uh, you can go on and on and on and I've even uh, I, I did a blog post on my blog um, just compiling all the things that I have uh, uh, learned about it in a short summary just to show you how complicated this thing can get it's not so simple it involves so many different areas uh, the most essential being your overall happiness which is actually very deep and um, requires a lot of elements in itself and people like to think it's something very simple like um, follow your passion or uh, the more money you make uh, in your job the happier it will be and those things are far from the truth and also there's a lot of people who because of uh, maybe immigrant parents or whatever reason uh, their delusion into oh, do this for the money even if you hate it uh, that's how it is and it's because their role models or their the figures that, that have told them to do such things have stuck out along this pathway for many many years maybe their whole life um, and some people have just uh, resigned themselves to believing that this is the only pathway that you can follow um, and they've resigned themselves I, I can't do anything else it's a very common feature and this book it's called I got my dream job and so can you um, it's a good starting place um, I mean the rabbit hole if you choose to go down this rabbit hole goes very very deep and there's so many uh, videos online there's a commencement speech by uh, Jim Carrey there's hundreds uh, of TED Talks about this topic. Then it goes into happiness. There's a book called uh, The Business of Happiness by uh, Ted Leonsis. He's a billionaire now. Uh, it goes even deeper into the topic. And um, it just, it, it also really emphasizes this because uh, one of the big things you find is that having a lot of money or making a lot of money or making more money might just make you sadder and less happy in life and that's one of the key concepts that a lot of unrelated books and articles um, have I, I've encountered while uh, reading this this man Ted Leonsis was a multi-million millionaire many times over and he was in a life crisis situation where he realized his plane might crash and burn and everyone was praying on a plane and he realized at that moment that he was not happy with his life despite all the money he had and everything this is a very profound topic and he distilled into a few concepts um, after much thinking and deliberating and uh, networking and asking happy people how they su achieve success or not success but um, happiness uh, how they did it and they, he distilled it into six traits um, I'll leave that for the review on it but the six traits are like stuff like communities of interest giving back higher calling stuff like that not money 
uh, this book, uh, one, you know, I've only gotten uh, a short way into it. I'm actually a very slow reader. I never really, uh, a lot of these books I can't finish because I'm such a slow reader. Um, but, uh, I mean, uh, there have been numerous questions that have been posed that have just been very insightful in my um, whole uh, delving into this topic. Stuff from like Warren Buffett, like, if you were already independently rich, what job would you choose? These questions that just tug at your, you and make you think in profound ways. Um, this book is chock full of them. Like Warren Buffett, he gave me like a couple. Um, but this book, I mean, some of them I've heard before. Most I have not. And this, is a, this author is fairly young. He's in his mid-twenties. And he is, for him to be able to think up these things is just incredible. And obviously we live in a time and age where uh, the possibilities are endless. Um, as far as achieving those possibilities, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's possible. If you want to achieve that, it often entails a lot of hard work. That's, that's the big drawback. And a lot of people fail to you know, take that leap because they want to stay in their comfort zone and not go through all that hardship. They'd rather have the crappy job that they hate and live in a comfort zone of you know, tolerability than take that leap, do something that's simple but hard for an extended period of time. Just like weightlifting, fitness, all those things. It's simple but hard. Eat less, work out more. Do another set of reps. It's simple. The concept's simple but hard. Same thing with, um, I mean, that whole concept transcends uh, fitness. It goes to, uh, you know, I, I recently saw a video um, from an entrepreneur millionaire who, uh, w who started in real estate. He said it's, it's simple but difficult to do. And the same thing with the book uh, Jim Rohn. He's a, uh, I, I would call him a uh, self-help guru. Uh, who became a millionaire, lost it, and then became a millionaire again, uh, helped millions of people achieve their level, their success, their version of success. He said the same thing in his book. Um, anyhow, let me just read you a few of these questions that will just open your mind. Um, let's start with uh, just a couple. Uh, Let's assume you have the ability to create your ideal life. What would it look like in five years? This is a common interview question. Where do you see yourself in five years? If you're being interviewed for a job, uh, you, you can bet to be asked that. What is your definition of success? Not media-driven success or worldly success. Um, and then he goes on to reference his a case study of this where, long story short, he got offered a job that paid four times more turned out it was a horrible mistake because he, he didn't hate it but it wasn't something he really wanted it didn't really give him a higher calling or purpose in life and he was less happy than with his previous job and that's a common thread there's a book by uh, Warren Buffett's son um, life is what you make it by Peter Buffett very similar vein he referenced a colleague who uh, followed the same path promoting from a vice president to president of this uh, news, I think it was a, a magazine publishing company, same vein, and he chose to uh, do it and he regretted it. And it's interesting because he worked out uh, to get that job from the, the lowest possible position. He was a uh, uh, one of those uh, f people who organized the mail in the back of the the mailing room when he started in that company and he worked his way up to vice president. Uh, anyhow, let me just read you a few of these uh, questions and then just be done with it. Um, if you want more, check out this book at your local library um, or just uh, buy it if you want. Uh, you can get it pretty cheap used on Amazon. Uh, another question he uh, poses is, um, what are your five proudest achievements and why do you why do you uh, value these achievements so much? I think five is a little too much. I think uh, choosing just one, the, your highest achievement is what you want to do. Um, I think uh, another good 
piece of advice. Uh, I got this from Warren Buffett. Uh, he gave it to his uh, his flight pilot who was having a sort of career crisis himself. Um, he asked him, "What uh, are your top ten biggest priorities and goals for your entire life?" And then he said, "Okay, now that you've given me those, eliminate." numbers two to nine and do everything you can to avoid doing anything to achieve them because they distract from number one and those nine are the worst possible things that you can do because they distract from number one it was just a profound way of thinking about things and again i'm sort of summarizing and again it's you know i may have skewed what he said slightly unfortunately I know I'm sort of biased because of my uh, imperfect memory, so um, yeah, you, you should look it up yourself. Anyhow, there's a few other uh, questions in here that I think are just very important, uh, some even better ones. Uh, if you found out that you only had 12 months left to live and you had to work every single day of those 12 months, what would you do? Very profound question. Um, and I think I'd like to add on something to it. If you could do anything you want to do, what would you want to do? And again, please try and remove the glamour of it. Uh, like, I would be a movie star or actor. You really have to think through it because um, uh, I, I, like, I tend to think like this oftentimes myself. And you have to realize each of these professions are not as fun and amazing as you think they are when you remove the glamour. It's a lot of hard grinding in the studio, a lot of takes and takes and uh, waiting in line and being yelled at sometimes, not always, when you're filming or acting. And oftentimes you just, uh, uh, like the script's given to you, uh, when in reality you want to direct or create the script. A lot of things, there's a lot of grinding to it. And oftentimes, I don't think the question's perfect in that numerous people, just think Steve Jobs, uh, their dream job was not invented at the time. So if they pursued what they wanted, they would have ended up somewhere crappy. Uh, not always, you know. Uh, uh, there's this talk I listened to where um, uh, the, the speaker was giving the, uh, the debate. He was, he was saying that Steve Jobs was passionate about uh, a lot of uh, Eastern philosophies and meditation and art at the time and if he had pursued what he wanted to pursue he wouldn't have ended up at um, as CEO of Apple and created the iPhone and everything like that uh, I don't know if that's completely true though he's he's giving the uh, he gave the explanation that he would have ended up as some meditation expert um, um, and he said the reason Apple sort of started and for him to, to sort of go along with it was because he it was more practical from a monetary standpoint and it played to his strengths of earning money. Um, I don't know if that's actually true. I do think that uh, S Steve enjoyed what he did um, in Apple and it led him to something. So, but I do think that this question is imperfect in that you sometimes can't really concretely definitively decisively figure that out you sometimes have to stumble across it and the best thing to do is to throw yourself and experience things in life because uh, your lack of experience is uh, preventing you from narrowing down what you really want to do see it goes deeper than you think it's not just uh, you can decide off the top of your head you don't have enough knowledge or experiences in the real world and you don't know how detailed and differentiated the thousands and millions of careers are out there and industries that you've never even heard of or have yet to be invented or whatever or what you've yet to be uh, exposed to that could potentially be you again you know maybe I'm catering to the wrong crowd maybe you're that engineer or scientist who knows you want to do science or physics um, another question what do you want people to say about you after you die mm, decent question whom do you admire most and why? And he, he poses uh, a very good point. I think a lot of people, I, I agree with. Um, he says that 
people, a lot of people have different roles. Some people have role models uh, to be Donald Trump. Others, Mother Teresa. There's no right or wrong answer. People are born differently. Some are born to be business titans. Some are born to be humanitarians. Um, you have to cater to your strengths. Another good question. If you could be the best in the world at anything, what would it be? Uh, so this is, again, a sort of hypothetical question, almost uh, implying that you can be endowed the skills of the expert of any industry, crafts, uh, job that you could want. Um, musician. And again, uh, just to illustrate, just a, a, a standard generic industry like musician can differentiate to very deep levels. Musician. Classical, pop, do you want to be a dubstep person? Do you want to be the producer, the singer, the composer? Um, do you want to help make music videos? It differentiates pretty quickly. Even something as generic as doctor, I've learned that can differentiate very, very quickly to thousands of occupations. Uh, there's doctors that specialize in very specific things with the foot or very specific things with the heart. You could be a pathologist that only sits in the lab and looks at uh, slides at the microscope all day. You could be a radiologist who only looks at x-rays. These are all doctors who have went through med school. It differentiates very quickly. Um, so don't give up hope. Another question. If you had the ability to change anything about the world or to help any, other, any group of people, what would you do and why? Another question. What type of job would you pursue if you knew you would get it and if you knew you would succeed after getting hired? Very profound question there. Um, what personal struggles or challenges have you or your closest friends or families or members overcome? That's a decent one. I, it's, it's nothing great. If you had to read a hundred books in a hundred days on one topic, what one topic would you read about and why? Very, very profound topic. And as you can see, you know, look at me. Uh, a year ago, I hadn't read a book for many years. And now I'm at least attempting to consume a lot of books. Uh, surprisingly, nonfiction. Five years ago, I hated nonfiction. I thought it was pointless and stupid and it's like historical facts. And I only read fiction books like Harry Potter. Uh, Aragon and look at me now you, you know sometimes you don't know um, what you don't know you think that you understand the world but in reality you don't have enough information you haven't been exposed to things in the proper way to open your mind to your real passions uh, for me you know uh, my if you just look at my reading I guess you can say it goes to nonfiction, business, business economics, success, uh, a little bit, uh, a good deal of dating advice, not really from reading books, more so from videos, um, and social media and that sort of stuff, entertainment. Um, what is easy for you that might not be easy for others? A very profound question that I have stumbled across numerous times from different sources. I think it's a very, very good question to ask yourself. It's very, very useful I, from my experiences and all the different things I've seen this question pop up in. Um, what activities do you enjoy participating in during your free time and are, they, are there any common elements among these activities? By the way, he gives uh, a few paragraphs just uh, giving his own experiences and inputs on each of these questions after posing them. What are you doing when you're happiest and most confident? And are there any common elements among those times? And then it goes deeper. It goes to stuff like, uh, do you prefer a nine to five job or a more varied work schedule? And so forth. So again, it's, I think it's, uh, you know, I've just started reading this. So far it's been pretty good. Honestly, I, you know, unless it's a really good book I can really get into, m most of the books I read, um, it, it, I, I get very bored, um, not too quickly. For this one, it actually hooked me from the start until like 20 pages in, then it died down, and then I've sort of had to discipline myself to keep going. 
because it's it's I can't deny it it's pretty useful um, but the boring factor is still something in it but so far I think it's been very useful it's by Pete Leibman and um, it hasn't gotten that much attention on Amazon or sales from what I can tell uh, I wasn't paid to promote this I don't think he knows of my existence uh, it's only got like 10 reviews on Amazon which means it's not like a huge seller but I think it's it's pretty useful because it's new um, he poses an introduction how he is different from all the other books on this topic because uh, from my experience and I do agree a lot of the other books are very old school from 20 30 years ago and the climate has changed dramatically um, so I don't think a lot of those are relevant today this one was made in I believe 2011 which is fairly recent and I think it's quite useful some of these things I do think are timeless and the way it's formatted I think it's better than a lot of other books uh, there's this one I read which just it, it was just very spiritual it's just too much spiritual and didn't really help another was just too mathematical um, this one I think so far it's been decent and much more useful than anything you'll find online with articles and stuff like that so uh, that's all I really want to say about the topic as always like favorite comment subscribe to my channel and um, I think one thing I have I think I've sort of learned that I want to potentially do is um, some medium of entertainment uh, I think I'm moving more towards the uh, visual and audio side and it's not what you think what the content I'm releasing now is more informative and I, I, I think I want to do that too educational informative inspiring but also um, I'd like to see what I want what I can do with uh, the entertaining side of it like um, uh, playing a very popular song and then doing a music video to go along with it starring me as the lead something crazy like that so watch out for something like that on my main channel on youtube youtube.com slash will you laugh and um i will see you in my next video as always hit the like button if you like this video leave a comment and i'll see you in my next video hit the subscribe button so you know when i upload again thank you guys for watching um see you guys later